do this a little mental health Monday. It's just a little, I was getting ready to be real hype and you came in there very, very <laughs> calm. Shut that down immediately. <laughs> it's mental health Monday. Hey, oh, um, and it's that time again. Get our minds right. We got another guest with us today. We, we do. Tristan Miller joining us. Hi, Tristan. how are you? Hey, oh, what's up, man? Living alone in a basement. How about you? <laughs> I'm living, living alone above ground. So, uh, well, congrats to you. That. You're slightly better off than me. I've know. got a roommate, so I guess I don't technically live alone. So, yeah, you just, you just feel it sometimes. I just yeah. feel it all the time. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, yeah, but things are going pretty good. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Awesome. Um, fully vaxxed, ready to mingle, ready to make some mistakes and act like a young person again. Yeah. No. Yeah. Especially you said you're in New York, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty, plenty to get up to. Uh, there is, there is plenty to get up to. Um, no good, mostly up to no good. Uh, but yeah, there's like obviously museums and shows and like comedy shows have really started popping off again. And, um, and yeah, and like the movie theaters are open. I have yet to go to the movie theater because I'm trying to figure out what, like in my mind, I'm like, I either need to go see Kong versus Godzilla or Minari. It needs to be either like a really good movie or just absolute schlock. I, I saw both. So oh. <laughs> which one do you think would be a better, like a re for uh, coming back to the theater? Minari. Minari. Okay. Yeah. Oh, a good one. Mm -hmm. okay i i've heard nothing but good things i just i just got my copy in the mail the other day so it's you love to see it <laughs> uh, so uh pretending like we didn't just ask you this 20 minutes ago <laughs> uh tell, tell us uh, a little bit about yourself sure i'm a, I'm a sweet about yourself mm -hmm. i'm an actor and comedian and podcaster and i'm a sweet midwestern boy i i'm come from minnesota and was raised in south dakota a little bit and now i live in in queens new york out here i've been recently uh, <laughs> realizing that like i've slowly developed a bit of an accent from living in new york for long enough so i'll say insane stuff like you better wash your dog and i'm like what <laughs> is happening <laughs> this is a linguistic nightmare but yeah um so yeah and uh so I, I'm doing stand up again. That's really great. And we do. I'm doing a weekly show out here in Queens and the, at the B Cafe, and that's been really, really wonderful. Um, a lot of great comics up on that, and it's been really. <laughs> it's, I feel very lucky because all the comics we've booked have been good. You know, I did go to a show before I started running my own show, and like you know, when you're in quarantine, you you know, you or at home in general, you get to really cherry pick what experiences you have yeah and that was the same for stand-up i was like oh man stand-up so fun i love this this you know i got really i watched everything ashling b put out i started watching dylan morin again and like and then i went to a comedy show i was like ah yes some comedy is very bad <laughs> i had forgotten that sometimes you're on a lineup you know you just have a bunch of great comics one big stinker and a bunch of other comics you know so I, I'm really grateful that all the comics we've had on are have been really, really good and really, really fun and really, really funny. Um, but yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We were just uh, talking before about that stage health. And, oh, yeah. Uh, I'll never forget the very first time I did stand up uh, because I'm pretty sure I broke my fucking ankle like right before I walked inside. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, uh, I, I had just gotten a new new job and it started the next day. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I I at least looked both ways before I crossed the street. I just didn't look down before I crossed the street. And there was a big old pothole waiting for me. And uh, it just felt like my whole foot turned to one. Oh. And uh, it, it was that type of pain that I wasn't quite sure I was going to make it across the street. I was having the, having the tunnel vision. So I, I, I limped my way in there and I did stand-up comedy for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Next day, I could not walk on that son of a bitch, and uh, <laughs> ever since then, it has not been right. But the one art form that requires you to literally stand up, you right. are here. Yeah, the one and, thing, uh, I'm yeah. Doing, it's like that's gonna you be start difficult. taking a seat on that stool, and all the comedians are like, "He he hasn't earned that." 
Yeah, he hasn't heard right. that right to relax. <laughs> <laughs> Who is he, Mark Marin? Shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn, yeah. I never knew that you had to earn the right to sit. It's a weird thing. Seat. It's like you have to be like people are like if you start off doing that too quick, they're like, what's happening? You think he's better than everybody else? And it's like <laughs> you are projecting so much. Sometimes a bitch is tired. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have in the middle of a set and just gone, fuck, I'm tired. And I just sit down and start talking or I just be like, I got to sit my honky ass down here for a minute and just <laughs> fucking calm down because like you know you're up there sweating and like a little nervous and trying to entertain and then you realize you just worked a you know 12 hour day or whatever and you're yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> i i i did sit down on the front of the stage one time mm -hmm. and i heard somebody mm -hmm. in the audience go this motherfucker just sat down <laughs> 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 so i was like okay no nope. <laughs> They, they I, expect me to be standing up during this. I um I did that recently. I was out in Miami doing a gig, and I sat down. It was at a theater, and I sat down on the stage. I was like, "It's so intimate. How nice!" And like, <laughs> people responded to that, and then I had no place to go, and so I just stood back up. I was like, you know, because you know you can follow these impulses, but sometimes they lead to either nowhere or just a singular joke, and then you have to kind of move on. Yeah. So. uh other than other than laughter being the best medicine, we got you here today uh, because you are a bit of a mental health advocate yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you start advocating for yourself, and then it kind of trickles down for others, and it's very much tied up with stand up as well. I didn't start doing stand up until I got my diagnosis with bipolar disorder because I was like, okay, now I have something to actually talk about. Because I'd done it a little bit here and there, and was like talking about like Star Wars, and you know jerking off or whatever and i'm like this isn't <laughs> this is very passive jerking off yeah it's star wars <laughs> bipolar disorder yeah yeah so at least now i'm like talking about something that's like emotional resonant and it also made it easier for me to talk about in public you know and you know i've gotten a lot of good feedback of like it's made uh, it easier for other people too which i'm very grateful for um yeah. uh <laughs> i will say there is you know there is absolutely something wrong with my mindset, though, because someone came. I do an hour about bipolar disorder called manic impressive, and I was touring it before you know the pandemic hit. And someone came up to me after the show, and they were so kind. They were like, you know, I my doctor recommended I start doing therapy, and I was really nervous, but hearing you talk about it, you know, I'm going to do it, and I really want to thank you for that. And in my mind, I said yes, but was the show funny? <laughs> like that's where my priority is. Um, but yeah, it, it's been really nice um, to get that response. But yeah, I I do have a mental health podcast as well. I haven't done, I'll be a, I hadn't done episodes in probably about nine months, just because like I did a few during quarantine, and it just turned into like, how are you adapting to the pandemic? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's part of it. And that should be part of it. But like, it was kind of the same conversation over and over again. And then also some stuff happened in my life um, where I'm like, I need to take time off. And like, I my only regret is that I, like, I booked a notable internet, per a couple notable internet people and then just stopped. Like, I was like, oh, well, all that momentum's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll fucking see. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, talking about it publicly is, you know, it, it's made it easier to talk about it also in private and like let people know what's going on. But with that being said, like I've never like mentioned it at a job. I've had like a day job. Like I used to work at a preschool and I never brought that up because like you don't necessarily want like an insane bastard looking out to your kids. It's like, no, 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 no. I have the fun one. I have, <laughs> I'm like a crazy <laughs> uncle. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm not going to lose consciousness. Um, but yeah, so, but it's been made, it's made it a lot easier talking to like friends and family about it and that sort of thing. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I think you find that a lot with stand-up comics. <laughs> I think a lot of us uh, tend to have some sort of mental health issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It, it helps. It comes. It, it comes with the territory. Yeah, I think so. And I also think like you wouldn't do it if you didn't have some sort of need within you to like for that kind of attention. And then also like 
you know, um, to, to be an artist, you have to see the world differently and to see the world differently. We just call that mental illness. Like, you know, if we like if I was living fully alone, not in society, I wouldn't be mentally ill. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So since there are like rules <laughs> that I have to abide by, that's why we call it mental illness, which is like fine. And, you know, you have to adapt the way you have to adapt. But like, I think most artists have something going on or some sort of experience that has changed their point of view. Otherwise they're um, boring. Yeah. No, like, I mean, I, I feel that right there. Yeah. <laughs> it can definitely get a lot of uh, repetitive at that point. Cause like I've, I had that, you know, like I went as a stench in life where, you know, shit was like great and good and I was just loving everything. And then that's all the music I was putting out. Just kept saying that same shit. Like life's great. Mm -hmm. I love it. And, you know, it got like, I wouldn't say it was boring to other people. They were liking the songs I was putting out. But for me, it was like, man, this is getting kind of boring. Like, yeah. you know, you kind of need. And I did. Then, I, you know, the universe works like that. They're like, oh, it's boring here. Let me throw you some shit. Then my guy, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, I'll, I'll drag you back down. Then <laughs> OK. All right. Like, yeah. I remember I was on a panel about mental health and comedy. And someone was like, I feel like I need the pain in order to like, you know, be able to create art and i was like hey listen life will always kick you in the teeth like something bad will always happen to you yeah. don't let the bad thing that's happening be yourself you know the yeah. lord will provide you know? yeah no like for real though like i i think that all the time like i i've got to catch myself now i can't sit there and and question this universe because i feel like it just it just slaps me right back anytime i do it yeah <laughs> 100 percent definitely so uh tell us tell us a little bit about bipolar oh it's great i love it so much it's my favorite um no it's um basically the way i like to kind of describe it is you're either going really very quickly or very slowly mentally because you know pardon me sometimes um people use up or down mm -hmm. and up has a connotation of like being positive and down has a connotation of being negative, which is not necessarily the case because like if you're because there are two major moods that happen are either triggered by some sort of event, either consciously or subconsciously or go in a cycle. And there are manic and depressive episodes. There's also called manic depression for a very, very long time. And then there is a certain stigma with that. So they change it to bipolar disorder in like the 1970s. But um you know, dep I think we're all pretty familiar with depression and what that looks like and what that feels like, specifically after this past year. I think we all got a little bit depressed um, at the very least. If you like walked through like I felt fine the whole time and like you're probably a sociopath and that's yeah. fine, but you need to work on yourself. Um, whereas mania is like a lot and a lot, a lot of energy. And you go very quickly and that can lead sometimes from everything to like euphoria or you're like, oh, this is it. Or, or, you know, <laughs> full Robin Williams, like, oh, hey, wow, what, 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 what a place, you know, sort of thing. <laughs> or it can be like really, you can go really agitated. And that's always really difficult. You can have these outbursts of anger and like that's really difficult to manage. And it also can happen within like five minutes of each <laughs> which is very confusing for everybody involved because you're like you were so happy just five seconds ago or you were like so mad and now you're fine um but there's three tiers of bipolar disorder you can find which one is right for you call your doctor um there's cyclothymia which is kind of like um seasonal affective disorder only a little bit more extreme where you have a cycle over the year where you go up and down and up and down, but it isn't necessarily, it generally has something to do with the weather, but it doesn't necessarily have to do with it. So you can be like on the 4th of July crying, <laughs> you know, and holding a hot dog and be like, ah, God, it's like, why are you crying? Bill? Like, I just love America so much. Is that, <laughs> was that work? Um, <laughs> and then there's bipolar two, which is what I have, which is a little bit stronger, but it's the lighter of the two where you have what are known as hypomanias, which are lighter manias where I have a bunch of energy, sometimes agitated, um, a lot of creative and quick thinking. Uh, then there's bipolar one, where it's like you have a full blown manic episode, which can like lead to psychosis, which is, you know, knowing that I have that genome in me is a little concerning. <laughs> a lot of the times, like, is today the day I lose grip with reality? We'll see, you know, <laughs> you know, 
luckily I have a good treatment plan, so I don't think that's going to happen. And then throughout all of these, you have the depressive episodes, which of course are like, you know, lethargy, lack of focus, lack of desire to do things you like to do normally, mm -hmm. um, being bummed out, being just like a bad hang, you know, <laughs> that's the major symptom of depression. A lot of the time is just being a bad hang, you yeah. know, um, <laughs> but yeah. <clears throat> so that's We've kinda, all been there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like, that's the thing that's kind of, um, when I've explained this to people, like I can always like explain the depression because everyone's gone through a depressive part of their life. Someone, yeah. something bad has happened. They felt grief. They felt depressed. Whereas like not everyone has thought they were talking to Jesus. And so that one's a little bit harder to explain where you're like, you're not, everyone's walking around going, you know what? I think I'm a genius. I think I'm tapped into something that uh, other people aren't tapped into. And that's the thing with the creative side of like, you're producing so much work, but like, is it any good? Who can say, <laughs> you know, but there's a lot of it, right. you know, <laughs> it's, it's the Stephen King mindset. You just keep pumping them out and hope, hope oh, something yeah. works. <laughs> One will stick eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, it seems to, it seems to work for him. I just, I was just, I collect his books. I was just saying the other day, I, I need him to die soon. Uh, I need him to die soon because I, I need to catch up. Like, he's, yeah. he's literally putting out like two or three books a year still. Yeah. Like, Just, all right, man, we get it. Yeah, we, you're like, good at you're good at this shit. Like, I got it. <laughs> Everyone, just calm down. Right, king, you're the king. I got it. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> I love there's that interview with him and George R.R. R. Martin and George R.R. R. Martin is like, do you ever just sit there and you're like, I can't write. It's awful, it's horrible, it's painful. And you're just trying to get something out. And Steven just goes, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. it's a job. You fill pages. Uh -huh. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I wish I, uh, so I, I, we, we've kind of talked on the show before about uh, creativity being a good mm. uh, uh, outlet. There we go. Yeah. That's the word. A uh, good outlet for, for mental health stuff. Um, I, I definitely find with, uh, you know, a lot of my anxiety stuff, I, I channel it into my writing or my music or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what are some challenges, though, as a creative that you've, you've hit because of this? Sure. I, well, obviously when you're depressed, you can't do anything. Um, David Lynch has this great bit, you know, cause you know, he's all for transcendental meditation, which is helpful and, um, and feeling good in order to create good art because he's like, imagine if you have a headache, a splitting headache, you're vomiting and you have diarrhea on top of that. How much work are you going to be doing and how much are you going to enjoy it? And that's, you know, how I feel about being depressed of like, it's really hard. Those, those are really difficult. Not because like, oh, I'm like moping or whatever. It's like, I just physically don't have the energy to do the things I know I'm good at, that I want to do, that I have the ideas for. And it's hard. It's very hard when I'm in that zone because I also don't consider myself a depressed person. Um, I'm pretty optimistic. I'm pretty wholesome. I'm pretty, you know, I'm Luke Skywalker over here. I'm like, everything will work out. <laughs> and then like, and then when you're like, ah, oh, I just want to die. Like that's hard to process because you don't feel like yourself. It's like, you know, right. having a really bad cold where you're like out of it. And so that really is a hindrance. Um, and then, you know, it used to be before I was like on the treatment plan I am for, you know, I'm, I go to therapy, I, I meditate twice a day and I am on medication. Like, so like, I don't actually think about my mental health too much because I've gotten a routine. Um, and that's been very, very helpful. And so, uh, when I'm out of that routine, it's, it's, it's hard. And then also conversely with the Oh, right. The thing I, I'll finish the thought I was having. So I used to have a lot of anxiety surrounding like what I'm doing, what I'm making. Is this any good or whatever? And now I'm kind of just like, <laughs> you don't get to decide what if your art is good. You yeah. know, uh, I was talking about like stand up and that sort of thing, because some people consider it an art form. Some people think it's just entertainment. I let other people decide that for me. I'm like, this is I am doing a thing. And you can put whatever label you want on it. 
Um, so that anxiety has like really gone away, which has been such a joy. Despite this horrible, horrible past year, I'm more confident than ever, which is like weird kind of to think about. Um, but yeah, I, so there's that. And then when, you know, you're in a, like a hypomanic state, like I was saying before, you're making a lot of stuff, but is it any good? I remember, right. you know, <laughs> like back in 2016, I was producing five podcasts a week. So like Monday through Friday, I was doing something and I was like, looking back, I was like, ah, I was clearly in an episode. Like, why were you like, it wasn't a bad experience or I don't regret it per se, but I was like, you were doing a lot of talking for no reason for nobody to listen <laughs> to because <laughs> the numbers weren't great. But yeah, um, so it can kind of get in the way of that of like also like not finishing projects. Yeah. You have all these ideas and then, you know, you're bouncing around. I try to make like a cycle, you know, where I'm like, OK, I'll work on the podcast. I'll do, you know, a stand up show. I'll do work on a painting. I'll do a podcast, you know, like and you try and get into a routine that way. But it's pretty darn difficult sometimes yeah, to focus. That's, that's a big one I struggle with is, uh, you know, amongst certain groups. And now I've been dubbed with this reputation of, oh, well, he's not going to do it. You know, oh. like, it's not going to get done. And it's like, well, it, you know, it's not that. <laughs> it's like I'm yeah. capable of doing this. But in dealing with the, the mental health stuff as well, it can really trip you up. Uh, right now, we're we're producing our first uh, scripted series, uh, oh. and it's supposed to air July fourth. <laughs> and uh, we're we're sitting here casting, and the scripts aren't written, and all of a sudden, oh, we God. know what's happening. Like we know what's going down in all these episodes, but we also kind of need to put the scripts in the actors' hands. And <laughs> uh, yeah, but it is one of those things where it's so difficult to you know get past that that depressive state. And, and and like you were saying, like how much fun are you gonna have sitting here writing, mm -hmm. you know, comedy uh, when you're all you want to do is just curl up in a ball in bed? You yeah, know? yeah. I'd like. Then you get like, I mean, you can't do it while you're in it, but then you get great comedians like Gary Goldman who did a special called The Great Depression, and which was all about like he had a pretty severe case of it. Like he mm -hmm. had to try ketamine. Like. That's how bad it was. <laughs> like he did electroshock therapy, which is like kind of a last resort for a lot of folks. And he was, he makes it funny and poignant, but like he, I was talking to him and he's like, yeah, when you're in that state, it's impossible. You can't, if you can't get out of bed, you can't write, let alone be funny. Yeah. You know? Um, and Carrie Fisher said this beautiful thing in one of her books, which was like, a joke is hope, isn't it? You know, and I'm like, that sticks with me. And yeah. so I'm like, if I can still maintain my sense of humor, I know I'm not doing too bad. That's that's how I always gauge it for myself. Like mm -hmm. anytime, like uh, when when I first started having my seizures and stuff, I like we I remember going to the ER at this one point, And my thing is, like, I'm sitting here. I am the one cracking the jokes. We're there for me. I'm the yeah. one in the hospital bed, but I'm going to be the one cracking all the jokes mm -hmm. trying to make the nurses laugh, trying to make my mom laugh. And my mom knows that things are going south when I stop joking. Like yeah. I stop joking and my sense of humor is like drained. That's when I'm not doing okay. Yeah. Uh, Cause I've definitely, humor has always been a very big thing for me my whole life, even before being diagnosed with anything. Uh, you know, I just couldn't imagine not handling things through, through, yeah. comedy, through, through humor. Yeah. Yeah. It, it makes everything a little easier and I hear you about like, <laughs> I went to, um, not to brag, but I went to a general practitioner recently <laughs> and I was cracking jokes with the nurse and I was like, this feels so familiar. Why? And my mom had lupus growing up. She still does, but it's like in remission. And then she got cancer a couple of years back. And I was like, oh, shit, I know exactly how to make a medical personnel laugh because I've been in a hospital enough over the years so i hear you on that and like yeah absolutely if you know you can tell kind of like that spark's gone for a second and mm -hmm. how do you get that back and jacqueline novak wrote this really good book and i really wish i could remember the title of it um but it's an advice book for being depressed and she's a comedian she's very funny but basically the thesis is just like ride that shit out 
-hmm. like if you're depressed let yourself feel depressed for like and it's kind of like um going back to the analogy of like with a cold like if you go into work and you have a cold that cold's gonna last two weeks if you go i'm calling out two days done it's gone Mm -hmm. then you can come back and work more and i find if you just set some if you have the opportunity to set time aside and just you know take a take a minute and feel depressed and feel bad about yourself at least for me it passes quickly quicker yeah, yeah. i agree yeah. We're, we're very pro feel your feels yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no because it's almost you know cuz that's kind of where i was at the quarantine shit and it's almost like you're running away from you know yeah. acknowledge that you have depression and stuff especially like me cuz the music I you always did was positive and it was like happy and oh man, life, you know, we can learn from lessons and, and get better. So then when, you know, quarantine hits and all your plans that you had going into that just fade away with, and there's, you know, like it's a very valid reason why all these things are canceling left and right on you. And you're like, well, fuck, like I was going to do some wrestling shit. So it's like, damn, man, like I, uh, I just spent a whole year like working out and like getting better and like, and now for nothing, because it's like, if, you know, like when it first happened, we had like two or three months where it's like I was still working out, still like, nah, you know, mm-hmm. hopefully everybody will get their shit together and we can do something small or something. And then by like July, it was just like, ah, fuck, we're, we're going to be in this for the long haul. And then that that depression kicked in. And it was like yeah. because where, where it started really messing with me was all my musician friends were all like. I got all this shit to record. I'm going to start recording mm-hmm. all this music, la la la. And and every time I was around them, they had brand new songs. They were doing this and that. And I was just like, why am I not feeling like any sort of inspiration to make anything new or anything? And mm-hmm. it wasn't until I, you know, you sit down, you address that. And I started to get better. What it was around, around like October time, I feel like is when like it started getting better. And then me and him started doing this, this podcast here. Uh, which helped uh, a lot with a bunch of shit, kept us going, something to look forward to. Yeah. And yeah. then next thing you know, that that creativity just came right back in. So Yeah, I think creativity begets creativity. And I think a lot of people kind of get scared, like, if they're like... Also, I'm sorry you had to go through that. That sounds like a huge pain in the ass. Um, but I think creativity does beget creativity. And... You know, like some people, I think, worry about like, well, I'm not focused. Like if I have an acting job and I'm like learning my lines and then I'm also playing guitar, I think people see that as like, why aren't you focused? It's like, mm-hmm. well, everything fuels each other. I'm in this mindset. It's not right. like, <clears throat> it's not yeah. like, you know, it's unrelated, you know, so. The uh, the last time I went to the doctor, mm-hmm. uh, apparently they they now ask you some questions on depression. <laughs> apparently oh yeah yeah new to me that screener so so i'm i'm getting the screener um and uh the the first question i lowballed it but then i'm like there's no point it sounds like it sounds like aces across the board so i'm just mm-hmm. telling her yep 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 and i'm just so casual about it yeah she's, she's growing very worried uh about <laughs> me as this is uh going on she's like do you feel like you're you know a disappointment to your friends and family i'm like you uh, you don't know what I do for a living. Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. Like I, I, I try, I try to be an entertainer as a career. So yes, yeah. yeah. I am I your co-worker? Am I your co? Am I a doctor here? Yeah, right. of course I feel like it's yeah, a disappointment. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But she, she finally, she's just like, "Do you see anybody?" I'm like, "Yeah, I got there, but she's great. <laughs> she's she, she's great. She's fantastic." So we don't see each other that often because she gives me ways to cope with this. And then I can go back and see her. But in the moment, she was like, because I think you might need to see somebody. I'm like, no, nah, I'm in high school. About it. I already worry. got it. Got it covered. <laughs> yeah. I hear, that's always like, you know, sort of a nerve wracking thing. As someone who already has a diagnosis, they give you that screener. It's like, I don't like kind of similar to what you're saying. It's like, I don't want to talk about it. I already got a guy. It's fine. You know, yeah. yada, yada, yada. Um. But yeah, I'm glad that you have like coping skills. That was something that was like really helpful for specifically if you, you know, have specifically like anxiety or or bipolar disorder, like cognitive behavioral therapy, which is basically like workbook therapy is phenomenal because like you can talk like I can talk all day and talk about how I'm feeling. But like, what do I do with it? Right. Right. And so 
that was so helpful. I started with CBT and now I've kind of gone to a more general talk therapy sort of thing, which has been helpful because, you know, you know, you do, I did a few years of like, okay, I don't care where this come for, comes from. I just need to address it. And then now I'm like, I've addressed it and I can cope. Where the hell did this come from? <laughs> right. You know, kind of unpacking things a little bit more. It's, it's funny, like how that, some shit pops up like that like a lot within my life it's like i'll have a circumstance that like you know a situation that pops up and then you know hours later i'm sitting there i like to always like take some time to myself and really like reflect on and look at we had a big episode on doing reflection and shit and it's like you know you realize like one time <clears throat> uh you know i had some like plans going through with some girl or something and she was like oh i'll be there i'll be there and like strung me along until like 1 a.m and she's like yeah i don't think i'm gonna be there and I just like fucking lost it. And I was like, what the fuck? You know, like this is bull. And then like I stopped and like went to my and it's like, why am I reacting like this? There's got to be some reason like, you know, I, I shouldn't care. Like people can cancel plans. That's fine. Or decide they don't want to do something whenever they feel like it. And then it's like you, you know, you realize like, oh, shit, as a child, my dad used to do that to me. He used ah. to be like, yeah, I want to <laughs> see you. Uh, I'll come by and pick you up. And then I used to wait outside for like six hours for him to come pick me up ah. and he never would. And then it's like, oh, oh so goodness. I see this trauma from a childhood now from my dad. And that's what I'm like, when anybody does that to me, that's what it's going right back in my head to that. So, mm -hmm. it, you know, it's one of those things that you're like, fuck, when it happens, like, damn, that sucks. But it's great because it's like, okay, well, I've realized what the issue is here now. Mm -hmm. And now I can fix this going forward and, and not act like that or react like that to these situations because I know it's not anything on me. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, not, it's I can't take it as personal as I always would. Yeah, I hear you. I don't know if you feel this way, but often when I get those revelations, like I feel embarrassed. I'm like, oh, this was it. Oh, this stupid thing. Oh, fine. OK. <laughs> you know, right. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why that's my instinct. Maybe it's because I'm from the Midwest or whatever. And I'm sure you can relay of like, you you know, people aren't supposed to feel anything. According to Midwesterners, you're supposed to right. just float around. <laughs> just existing. Right. I'm um, sure at this point, my, my father is probably getting sick of being used as an example for this. But <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> we uh, definitely, you know, had that cliche father son, like we just kind of were very quiet, didn't really, you know, mm. have much to say to one another because he is your classic Midwest, doesn't share his feelings, stuff like that. Mm. Uh, and not too long ago, we had gotten into it about something and it kind of unlocked this one sentence that he told me. And, and as soon as he said it to me, I'm like, see now, where was this like 10 years ago? Like, mm. cause this could have shut down a lot of fights <laughs> like this could have shut down a lot of stress between the two of us uh and so it's not so much that embarrassment uh because I, I i've always been a guy who's <laughs> who's very pro like let's not be the clint eastwood types like let's yeah let's get it out there let's let's just share our feelings guys and they're like get the fuck out of here I'm like, oh, <laughs> all right um but uh yeah i mean when he told me that i i get that feeling more so of like Look at all this shit we could have avoided. <laughs> you oh, know, sure, we could have yeah. it out. Like, you know, things could have been so much simpler and so much easier. And it's very easy to get stuck in that uh, thought process of of the past, for sure. And and yeah. getting hung up on things that are over. And uh, I know something happened not too long ago that I was thinking on. And I'm like, no, why am I sitting here thinking about that? It's over. Like, it's only going to keep being a problem if I sit here and think about how it made me feel like it's mm -hmm. over. Yeah. yeah. I would say that you're absolutely correct, but I almost have the opposite problem where I'm like, okay, that's fine. And then I'm like, okay, we have to move forward. And mm -hmm. then like months later, I'll be like, Oh, I forgot to deal with this. It's like, <laughs> you know, it's like finding a bill you forgot to pay. <laughs> yeah. Like, ah, oh, yeah. shit. The tax man's gonna come and get yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. You get that collections bill. You're like, oh Yo, shit, I forgot about that. I'm gonna be emotionally evicted. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you're you're absolutely right. It's like also like growing up more and more, you know, the older I get, the more I'm like, that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. That doesn't matter. Like I've had conversations, like issues with friends, and I'm like, why do you care about this? Oh, you're younger than me. Yeah. which is like <laughs> not helpful for the situation, maybe perhaps for them, you know, and you hear them out right. and that sort of thing. But like, I'm like, 
you'll get over this. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of where I've gotten to with that as well. Like I'll talk to somebody who's younger than me, uh, who as soon as they tell me how old they are, I'm like, ah, okay. Like this all makes sense. Like this is, I, like, I was the same way at this age. And it yeah. really doesn't matter what the fuck comes out of my mouth, whatever I tell you right now, because you're still going to learn this the hard way. Yeah. That's how it happened for me. I was also told about a kajillion times by somebody exactly the way things were going to play out. And they played out exactly as they were told to me. Yeah. 100%. And like, <laughs> I, I was dating this this woman for a while and she was a few years younger than me. And I'd be like, oh, you're just like 25 or whatever. It's fine. And she would get so mad because like I'm a pretty like peppy fun, not exactly like immature, but like childlike person a lot of the time. And she's like, how dare you? You cry at everything. And I'm like, yeah. And I then three minutes later, I'm fine. So like I know <laughs> how to. Right, yeah. This is just like I felt sad, so I cried, and then now I can move on with my day and we can order sushi. But I was like, <laughs> she, she, she would get so upset because when I was like, eh, you'll figure it out. You're 26. It's whatever, you know. And she was like, don't. You're not that much older yeah. than me. I'm like, I feel that. Yeah. I went through that same thing with an ex. Yeah. <laughs> she was only like two, or, two or three years younger than me, and I pull that shit all the time. But like, you'll understand one of these days. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But like the gap, because you, but in your twenties, it's such a big, it's a bigger gap than people kind of think. Sure. Cause you have like so much more specific experience and like the difference between being like 24 and 26 is actually pretty big. Yeah. Cause you're like, Oh, I know. It, like, I know what my credit score is constantly. You know what I'm saying? Like when you, I was 22, I was like running around drinking, right. having yeah. a great time. And like, now <laughs> I'm like, okay, well let's, Make some safe investments. Let's see how Dogecoin does, you know. Yeah. Uh, I feel that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely didn't have it all figured out in my 20s. I can tell you that. Yeah. It's, I've also sort of remembered we broke up, like, during the pandemic. And, like, I was, like, really trying to be, like, a man and like uh you know an adult in the relationship and then the minute i became single i'm like i'm still in my 20s motherfucker let me go right. be a little irresponsible not so in i'm not gonna go like do heroin or whatever right, right. but i am gonna be like fun and flirty you know because <laughs> i'm not yet 30 as they say you know damn i'll have to think of one for 40 <laughs> <laughs> let's see um, here uh, uh Oh man, I totally lost it. Whatever I was gonna say. I'm sorry. You no, know, it happens. We smoke a lot of pot here at Chasing Shop. It happens. It happens. Oh, okay. Lot. Copy. It happens. We tend to forget things. <laughs> I forget things, and I don't even smoke marijuana. So God bless. Which is why I'm like, why stop? Yeah. <laughs> why, why stop? I'm gonna forget things one way or the other. So, Pretty yeah. much, yeah. That's where I'm at in life. I think it's been a part of my life longer than it wasn't. So yeah, at yeah. this point, I'm pretty sure it's embedded into my DNA. And if I stop, I'm just gonna well, like when I did stop when I was in the military and I did stop like fully cl got cleaned and I, I was proud of myself, but everybody every day would be like sup stoner. And oh. it's like because that personality was still there. I still mm -hmm. was laid back and chill and I'd call people man and dude and bro. And they would like, there was this one guy that he, every day he would try to piss me off uh, and just get me up. Cause he's like, I've never seen you upset. I've never seen you mad. I want to see you pissed. And we were on deployment for like nine months. And he's like, by the end of this, I'm going to just get to see you real pissed. And no, no, like it was like, hey, I was like, well, now that you told me, obviously, I when I can tell that you're trying to get me upset, I can be like, ah, whatever. But then, you know, it's like there are situations where I would try to act upset and I'd be like, you fucking piece. And then I just start laughing. And it's yeah, like, yeah. Ah, I can't do it, man. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. It's like, I just nothing. I was like, because he's like, what are you, what are you going to do? You going to tell me to go clean my whole workspace? I ain't going nowhere. We're in the middle of fucking ocean. Like, I'll go sit there and clean all night. Like, shit, I don't care. <laughs> Okay, so do you I think what I was going to say was going off of what you said earlier about the, you know, yeah, let me cry for three minutes. I'll be oh, good. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I, I felt that deeply. Yeah. Was, uh, definitely being around, like, I spent a lot of time, like, with people who were just, like, very passive aggressive. Oh, sure. And, yeah. and I, I was not a fan. Uh, and no. I think because I, I, maybe it was a, the difference between Midwestern people and Southern people going down there. 
they're all very passive aggressive. Whereas I'm like, see, in my family, we would have raised our voices right quick and this would have been done and over with. Like, <laughs> so like, just get that out real quick. It's like, yeah. was, was, were they abusive? No, the fuck no. At no point it's like, hey, knock that shit off. And it's just like, okay, there was some, <laughs> there was some tone in your voice. I could either yeah. break down crying because you, you raised your voice at me because I kept being stupid and yeah. then finally lost it. And it's like, well, hey, stop. <laughs> and it's yep. just like, but then everybody else, as soon as you get mad over things that are completely reasonable to get mad over, oh, well, you have anger issues and you have this and you have that and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, I'm very, I'm probably the most positive person in this whole group. <laughs> but you, you piss me off because you just want to be passive aggressive. Like you want to bottle up all that negativity and shoot it out like daggers like <laughs> all the time at people and that i'm not i'm not cool with yeah. there is something to be said for just just feel it and get on with it you know yeah. just move on absolutely a couple of things um come to my mind number one i think um i'm almost 40 and feeling horny that might be your you know fun and flirty there you go um, two uh what is with the impetus? I've had like girlfriends be like, I've never seen, you know, I've been like, you've never seen me like really angry because like I have a huge, sh like it takes a lot mm -hmm. to do it. But when it's there, it's like the incredible Hulk. And they're like, Oh, I want to see that. I'm like, you fucking don't. Whoa, you don't? It's, it's wildly unpleasant. That's why I choose not to engage with that part of my personality. <laughs> why do you, right. like, what is that impulse of people? Like, I want to see you pissed off. It's I just like, don't get it. Yeah, I'm just like what I would rather never see anyone angry ever. But right. I remember there's a little crazy in you. Let's kind of let's come here. Yeah, I'm I'm like, like, that. It. like bring that guy out to play. It's like you don't want that guy here. <laughs> Do you want no. me to yell at you and then like kiss you? Is that what this is? <laughs> like right. uh but like I remember my girlfriend my ex-girlfriend rather, um, Rip. No, she's alive, just dead to me. Um <laughs> she uh she said at one point, like I said she's like you got you raised your voice at me and that's not okay i'm like well then you shouldn't have done that thing that pissed me off and she's like well that's not how it works you still shouldn't raise it. i'm like well then don't do so no that is exactly how or you upset me and this is how a feeling things works is like right. you know you said something that made me mad and i went hey and you were like hey don't do that i was like now we're both saying hey and this is stupid <laughs> Yeah. Now, if we're if we're sitting at the dinner table and I just throw my plate into the wall, I'm like, this shit again? Like, OK, that's that's yeah. a problem. like this is an issue. This is me just yelling at you and having yeah. anger issues for no problem or for yeah. no reason. But when we start a conversation with me going, hey, I, I'd really like to talk to you about this because it's really bothering me. And then you decide to be an asshole. And then I'm yelling a few minutes mm -hmm. later. Listen, listen, I don't think. I don't think there's anything wrong with what's happening here. Yeah. No. I feel like in relationships, we always confuse hurt with anger a lot. Yeah. Oh, 100%. You, you yeah. know, it's like the, you, you think, now nah, this person's just angry and they're, you know, pissed off or they don't like me or they're like, fuck him. And it's like, in reality, you might have done something that hurt the other person and they're just hurt. Yeah. Absolutely. I was told by some therapist or another, like, I um that that hurt is like a secondary emotion. It's a defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. So you don't actually feel the hurt deeply. So whenever I'm like mad, whenever mm -hmm. I'm just like, I'm like, okay, let's take, how are you actually feeling? And most of the time it's like, oh, they just hurt my feelings. And I don't mm -hmm. know. How, then you can, again, feel sad, cry for a minute. And then you're like, okay, I'm done. I'm good. Right. You know? It's like you said, it, it, it most definitely is a defense mechanism. I think like, you know, it comes from fear. Getting, getting loud is like my, you know, my way of getting big. Like I'm already a big guy, but that's my version of like, leave oh, me yeah, alone. I'm just going to start getting this bassy tone going so that you back off. Mm -hmm. uh, but people, uh, yeah, they definitely get a little worried about that. I'm like, no, like it's just, it's a, it's a refill. I get to a point now where <laughs> my voice will be raising because I'm frustrated. I'm upset about something, but I'm also like apologizing for it. Like I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm yelling. I'm, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> frustrated. I'm just hurt, you know. Yeah. Well, I get, I get animated. Like I'm a very animated person, especially if it's something I'm passionate about or anything like that. So yeah, in like conversations and shit, yeah, I get confused as being angry a lot. And it's like, dude, I'm not angry. I am just very excited 
and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm here. So yeah, like, I mean, I'll like with my, my parents and stuff when I'm talking to them and we're talking world issues or anything. Cause we, you know, couldn't vary any further apart from each other and stuff. And I'll be sitting in there, like hit my fist. Like, no, that's not how it fucking is. Listen. And yeah. you know, they're all like, Oh shit. Like, no, you know, we're starting. And it's like, no, nah, I'm not like, I'm not mad at you guys. And I, I was like, I'm, I'm passionate about this. I was mm-hmm. like, and, I was like, so I'm sorry it's coming across and you guys are feeling it like, you know, it's triggering anxiety for you guys, but it's not coming from a bad place on my end. It's just like, this is just how I am. Like, I will get animated to shit. Yeah, absolutely. And um, two things as well. Like Mark Marin has that great bit of like, he's like, I'm working on it. I'm working on like being aware of myself. This came out of my mouth the other day. Fuck you. I am sorry. And like tonally, and he's like, and I think we can call that contempathy. And I'm like, that's such a solid bit. And I feel that because I'm the same way of like, I'll be like, I'll raise my voice and go, I'm sorry. Listen, I lost my temper. And like, that's the other thing is like, it's such a weird thing of like, specifically having deal with a few people of like, (laughs) we have a term for it. You lost your temper. Your temper is like temperament where you're normal and then you lost it and you got angry. And we used to be like, yeah, that's just something that happens. But now yeah. everyone's like, who yells? It's like <laughs> everybody. Right. Also, specifically being a New Yorker, are you kidding me? People are yelling at across the street from each other. We're all very loud here because we can't hear anything because the train's going by. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's it's weird because it's 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 always like and it's what you're yelling about, too. Like mm. if you were yelling in someone's face about how much you appreciate them or how like happy you are they're <laughs> on this planet. They might like look back like, damn, you know, you don't have to be all in my, but thank you. You know what I'm saying? But if you're pointing out the flaws, you know, a lot of people, and that's the thing, you know, like I've done music and shit like that. um, So I'm blessed with being able to take the criticism. I know a lot of people that can't take that kind of criticism. Mm. So when you do start pointing out some flaws or you're like, hey, you know, especially like in a relationship or in, you know, a friendship, which still is a relationship type thing. And you're like, Hey, you do this. I don't really like that. Like that, you know, that might trigger me or that might, you know, bring up some bad memories. And it's like people instantly, it's like they can't take that criticism and they can't look at their flaws and try to work on it. Mm -hmm. But that's like, you know, that's one thing that I was always glad I went into music and like at my job and shit, when I was a manager, that's what they would always tell me. They're like, Cause you know, we'd have to do those uh, uh, manager evaluation things. And I'd always have to submit my self evaluation to them. And I never had my boss add anything to it. Like she was always like, when I sat down with her, she was always like, like, she's like, you definitely know where your flaws are all at and you can address them. And she's like, you give like actual explanations to like why you know and stuff like that like and she's like not any other person around here is at all they'll like just be like i can improve on my pitch and all this and that and it's like i'm sitting here being like i can improve on my communication skills with my employees yes i know this kind of makes me anxious sometimes having to talk big things with people and i need like you know if you might want to sit in with me a couple times and while i talk to somebody to make sure i'm like doing this right you know like shit like that and it's like I, you know, I always, that's one thing I've always tried to do is like, you can always improve every day. There's always a little bit of improvement we can do. And, you know, even the littlest things. So I've always took the self-criticism very well. I wish more people would, but. I agree. And I, I tend to as well. Number one, you know, you're a comedian and if you're a comedian and an actor, like, you know, you, for comedy, you get that instant, like whether or not something was good. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, as an actor, you, you know, people, it's such a shame that criticism is now such a negative thing when it's like a lot of the time it's constructive. It's like, Oh, this could be better this way. But even in personal relationships, I've been like, if like, say my, my mother says, I'm concerned about you in this way. I know that she is coming from a place of love. She's concerned for me. Whereas like a lot of people would be like, oh, you don't, you know, they're going to get very defensive. Like you hate me. It's whatever. Same with like friendships. Like I'm always like, okay, this person is weirdly been kind enough to point out something that they don't like. That's a lot of trust there. Mm -hmm. And I've been in situations where a friend has gone, I don't like that you're doing this thing. And I was like, okay, I'll knock it off. Like it's mm-hmm. pretty simple. I don't know. Like you, sh- 
Yeah. It's weirdly almost like not about you at that point. It's about how you're making the other person feel, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So and a lot your, of people don't think about that. Yeah. If you take your ego out of it, it's a lot easier to take criticism, specifically in, when it comes to like the arts, mm -hmm. because like it's about the product, it's about the end thing. You know, I, that's why I love film acting a lot more than theater acting is because like <laughs> my, yeah. if my performance is bad, it's probably not my fault. It's probably the director and the editor's fault. Like that's not my, you know, I'm just there to try and service whatever they're trying to do. Whereas like on stage is like, if I'm bad, like I'm the only one acting up here, yeah. right. you know, all eyes on you. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Um, I've noticed something uh, like just in society in general that, that fuck you, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I was like, I'll, I'll notice with, with the changes that are going on in the world. Like I've heard conversations recently where like, you know, you'll, you'll be with a group of dudes who are all talking. It's like, Oh, bitch, this bitch, that bitch, this bitch, that. But then there's always, there's always the one person that goes, yeah, but we probably shouldn't call them bitches guys. Like, you know, <laughs> like, and then, like I was, uh, we were, we were in a situation not too long ago, Shep and I, where we were with a couple dudes, who, they just started throwing the N word around. And we were both like, Whoa, yeah. there, fellas. And, and they just kept doing it. And then, and then as it petered out, the one goes, yeah, but really we, we don't have any business using that word. And, I was, <laughs> and I'm just like, you know, it's like there's progress happening, but it's weird, man. It's it's, it's, it's the progress looks weird. Yeah, <laughs> in action. Yeah, I think it's I, I again. I think it's kind of defensive of like they'll double down for a second. And they go, ah, no, you're uh, right. But 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 really though, this you know, we, and, we should knock this off. <laughs> yeah, I think it comes back to like a, almost a childhood thing of like you feel like a little kid, you know, when your parents are going, oh, you don't don't you do that? You'll get you know sent to your room. Which is like not true. You're an adult, so <laughs> there's kind of that dissonance of like, well, I can do whatever I want. It's like, yeah, but you might lose a friend based off of it, right? Yeah, you know, you can't use that kind of language in front of me. I'm not going to permit that. Yeah, Which... and something that you know I've talked about on the show before is that you can always confront somebody and not be an asshole. I mean, I think oh, people yeah. people really get confronting somebody mixed up with negative connotations, mm -hmm. like most of the time. Uh, and especially this past year, I've challenged myself to be more honest with people, uh, because, you know, I, I knew that like, for me, you know, I, like I would get myself into relationships that I had no business staying in. Like mm. I, I would know pretty early on that this is not something that I see lasting long-term or I don't have those feelings that I should have, but I'm telling myself, no, maybe they'll come. Maybe this needs to happen. Maybe that needs to happen. So really just being more honest with myself and whoever the other person is being like, Hey, you know, I am having a good time with you. I do enjoy you as a person, but realistically, you know, we don't really line up on these things and, and we're just going to turn around and break each other's hearts. Yeah. And, and people have such a hard time with that. The few people I did that to were actually like, so like taken aback by the honesty because it's mm -hmm. such like a rare thing for somebody to just go rather than ghosting you or, you know, like yeah. I'm just going to have this honest conversation with you right now and let you know that there's nothing wrong with you there's you know uh but we are also not obligated to be in a relationship like we can just yeah uh, <laughs> that is true you're not obligated to be that i like that right. a lot and i think yeah. that attitude is why i've been single for two years now it's just <laughs> they're just like don't like it too long ghost me I would rather have one good relationship every four years than a series of crappy ones every other year, you know? And like, I, I was the same way. I was like texting someone and I was like, I w had a, I had a job at the time I was working on um, a show. Uh, and I was like, I listen, I just straight up, I'm not going to have like time to like see you. We can like keep texting, but this is just like, we're, we're not going to like meet up at any point. This was also during the pandemic. So I'm like, just so you know, this is what this is. And they're like, yeah, I kind of figured. And then like over the next couple of days, it just petered out. I was like, that seems natural and good. You know, <laughs> it's like we weren't like getting along super well, you know. Which I don't know, man. I've been trying because I've been single for like four years. So I don't know. Mm. I, it, uh, yeah. Yeah, my, my situation on my end's a little funny. The universe is laughing at me, but it's like for me, it, I, I straight up a couple of weeks ago was like, you know, fuck this. I was doing the online dating things, you know, Tinders and all that good stuff. Cause it's like, you know, how else you, how is she supposed to do it these days? 
And uh, I gave up on all that. And it was like, right when you give up on all that, then you did, I, you know, I came across somebody that's like, oh, okay, no, this person's pretty dope. Mm -hmm. all right. yeah, maybe this might be something cool. But like, you know, again, the universe wants to laugh, but that is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like once you kind of stop caring in a way, you know, because you have, it's kind of the boom hour effect. You know, if you don't care, mm -hmm. you know, there's, that's confidence. And then people will kind of gravitate that, you know, because, People don't like desperation, which is unfortunate because everyone is desperate at a certain point. Like at their core, we're all kind of a scared child. Like, let's be honest here. We all want that validation, you know, that you get uh, whatever kind of validation you got growing up is the one you seek in romantic partners, they say. And that's been for me more or less the case. And like, we're all desperate for love and and the trick is, you know, again, it's, you know, it's mental health Monday, you know, you have to learn to love yourself. And once you realize, like, you get one person your whole life, and it's you, that's your partner. Yeah, you know, most of therapy I've found is just disassociating yourself just enough mm -hmm. to be like, Oh, do I like this person or not? Do I have to just respect Tristan at this point? Or can I love them? You know what I'm saying? So no, that's exactly how I felt about my situation is, you know, I got like this past year over the pandemics and stuff. We kind of a lot of my friend group, especially too. like I've always been that person that like, you know, hippie kid universe, all this good stuff. And they've gotten into like the metaphysical stuff, meditations, all this good shit. So it was almost like, you know, I tried so hard for like literally for like four years, went on tons of dates with people, met a lot of great people that I'm like, yo, on paper, me and you should be like perfect. But we weren't. And it's almost funny to me because it was like, I learned my lesson. I've grown like, you know, I'm I'm different than who I was when I started this journey of being like, I don't want to be single no more. I want to date. So I've grown. And it's like, you know, to me, the way I've been looking at this is like I finally grew, grew to my point where I needed to go to where I'm like, I don't need this dating stuff. I got all this shit going on in life right now. I just went on a date like this girl like a month ago. And I was explaining to her like all the shit I'd be doing. And she's like, how the fuck are you going to have any time to date? Like, yeah. And I was like, damn, like, good point. Like, I didn't think about that. Hi. Um, but left. it's like, I got to this point where it was just like, I didn't need that. Like, I was like, yo, I love myself. I love who I am. And I love the life I'm living. And I'm like, you know, cause I'm putting stuff back on this planet. I'm, I'm putting the things out there that will forever be out there. Even if I'm not here anymore. You know, like the the business I'd be doing, we're, we're trying to do stuff for community and all that shit. So I feel like we're really doing good shit. And it was like, I don't need this. And it was mm -hmm. almost like to me, it's like, you know, the universe looks at, you know, sees that like you've learned your lesson. You, you learned the lesson I was trying to teach you. You grew. You leveled up. Now I'll give you the reward. You know what I'm saying? That mm -hmm. will push somebody your way randomly out of fucking nowhere that you just click with. Like, and then you're like, well, fuck, man, I've been looking for this for, you know, for, for a few years now. Like, damn. All right. Cool, though. Uh, so that's like that's one of the things I've been getting into lately is just trying to be more uh, like with the, the like fending off depression and shit, just being more, I guess, metaphysical, doing yeah. like words of affirmation, you know, talking to myself, telling telling myself, like, you're a fucking baller ass dude you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying like you are a baller ass dude you are in company with great fucking people and they yeah. they love you too so there's a reason behind that kind of you know and it's like i don't know man every you know when you wake up in the morning and you tell yourself these kind of things to me it just starts that day great like yeah. something really fucks gotta hit me to like <laughs> throw that vibe completely off yeah I hear you as well with like the relationship thing because I feel like the trap that people fall into is like they want to feel fulfilled in a relationship. Whereas I feel like mostly relationships are like, oh, here's someone I like that I want to share the life I already have with, yeah. you know, and it's a, an addition rather than like, you know, a certain you know, it, you need to compromise, obviously, because you're like dealing with another human being. But like it should be you both should feel like I have my life. And then also you're a beautiful, like accent to it rather yeah. than, you know, this is not, you should not be consumed by dating, which is for me as a chronically horny person, like very difficult. <laughs> like, I, I, like I, I know exactly what you're saying <laughs> though. My guy, like, <laughs> and it's the weirdest thing too, because like, I've been like that my entire life, but all the relationships I've been in, 
complete opposite of that. So then like, mm. I will, meet, I will meet people and you know, they've got to sexually explore big time. And they're like, mm. well, I like this. I like that. I like this. And I'm sitting here like, well, I don't know if I like that, you know, mm. like I'd try that, but like, and it's almost, you know, that was a whole nother mental health thing. Cause then it got to a point where, you know, you get old and you're, you're looking at this thing and it's like, why have I not ever felt comfortable around anybody to sure. try these things? Or why is nobody that I've been with really felt comfortable with me to want to explore these sorts of things? Like, mm -hmm. and I know like a certain, like, a, you know, a few instances that stick out of like people I dated and it's like, like for me, if it's something that's like, we're talking sexual stuff and it's something that's like dirty, dirty. Mm -hmm. I'm like a little kid. So like if, if I'm sitting there and like a girl's like, you know, Oh, we should try like role play. I want to wear like a sexy outfit for you or something. I'll just be like, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I've never had nobody do that. Well then like yeah. th that girl that I was dating, she always took it that as, as me laughing at her idea. And it's oh, like, no, 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 no. It's like, I'm just like, I'm getting giggly excited and like, Oh wow. Like, yeah, but you're it, bashful. It, Right. Yes. And it was just like the whole way, like it was just, you know, with her own problems in life and the shit she had dealt with, you know, mm -hmm. it was just like the way that it would always come across was like, no. And then our relationship became like absolutely no sex at all. Oof. And and then it was like we because it's like I knew that she was a very sexual person. I know I'm a very sexual person. So after you're together for like eight months and not having sex, it's like, well, I, I feel like we're getting off somehow here. Like, you know, yeah, like yeah. <laughs> so like. I don't know, man. And and that's just one of those things that it's just like, I've always been that guy in a relationship with people that I was just like, I mean, if I haven't tried something, I can't say I don't like it. Right. So, you know, mm -hmm. depends on what it is and it depends on our level of connection, but like I'm down. And then, you know, they've always been like, Oh, that's really cool. Awesome. And then that's been it. And it's, it's weird that, you know, that's a weird thing recently that's popped up to me. It's like, I haven't, felt comfortable around a lot of people I've dated mm -hmm. and it's weird. Yeah. I've, I've yeah. sort of felt the same way, but. Well, I mean, it's almost like they've got like a, like an already like established perception of who I should be. Yeah. Right. And then it's like, so I just don't like feel comfortable. Like, cause it's not like they're, I'd never felt like they really, loved me for like all of me they like this mm. piece of me and that piece of me and this piece of me and the rest is like i guess i can deal with that you know i guess we can figure that out and stuff so it was never like uh just like completely i could sit here and be vulnerable around you or tell you like shit that like inside fucking terrifies me and not feel like you're gonna laugh or think that's stupid mm -hmm. or tell me i'm just being you know it's weird I don't yeah. know, relationships are really weird. And even like I'm 34 and it's like, you would think at 34, I'd have it figured out. And it's like, nope. Some people die not figuring these things out. Like you ever stop and think about your grandparents for a second? You're like, what happened there? You know, so don't, I would say, don't feel bad about it. There's so much like, that's why we keep making art about relationships because they're yeah. complicated and weird. And a lot of the times terrible. It's yeah. difficult dealing with people. Which it is, is like, man. You know, we bringing up our sex lives on Mental Health Mondays. We're definitely going to lose our moms. They're, uh, yeah. they're, they're definitely going to quit watching. Oh, my mom knows about like she. I got a kid, so they know I'm having sex and shit. You know, whatever. <laughs> that's that's my thing. It's like I can always tell people, point at him, and go, "Well, you know, I'm not a fucking virgin, at least." Yeah, at least there's whatever. once. Yeah, yeah, there was that one, that one time, and I loved mm. it. Nah, but uh. I don't know, man. I, I think it's all it all goes hand in hand, though. I mean, you know, sex being being sexual and comfortable with somebody has a lot to do with mental health. Yeah, it's about and, trust. Yeah, and and relationships. A lot of you know, them. What we got on last last week was was my issue with with sexuality and mental health because of the way somebody kind of disrespected that that trust between us, mm -hmm. and and it went on to just fuck me up mentally in every relationship since then. Yeah. yeah, and She'll it does to break my way out of the the stigmas she's she's left behind. Yeah, and it stays with you for a long time and pops up at weird ass times too. Yeah, yeah, that's always like that's always the worst when you're just like having a normal conversation or like someone's proposed something and you're like, oh nope, can't do that because I'm full of fear now or whatever and I feel <laughs> insecure, and you're like, you know. 
we're just eating a bagel right now. Why are you angry? Yeah. It's like, well, well, and I'm then it, everything to you. Well, and then especially with the way the world is and the way we're living these days, it's easy to, especially like, you know, we've been, we're talking on relationships right now. It's easy to get into a relationship with somebody and have all these past issues. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, and you might've worked your way through them and stuff and think you're done. And then they pop up and that person, you know, it just doesn't come across good to them. So they're like, you know, I could sit here and deal with this or I could find somebody that's not fucking dealing with that shit. Easy as shit. And, and just mm -hmm. do that. So I know that that is a lot of the problem too, because like, you know, they're everybody, especially like my age, I'm 34. So if I meet anybody else in their thirties, I assume we got some baggage we're bringing into this oh, you know, little, little thing we got going down. So it's like, everybody's going to have their issues. And like, my whole thing was always like, you know, finding that person that was, I, I, wa I want to work through these issues with you. Like, I want to be there as your support while you fix these issues in your life and shit like that. And shit help me with some issues I got, you know, that may maybe I don't even know about, but I think that's, you know, it's, it's fucked up, man. <laughs> yeah. Society's a little fucked up. Yeah. So we live in a society. It. Yeah, we do. We sure as fuck do though, <laughs> but there's still great people out there, you know, Absolutely. like, and that's the thing is, and, and that's what I, I've tried to tell. And I'm such a realist, but I've tried to tell friends like when they're down on like dating, I have a friend at uh, my job that he would be down and on there. Like I was, I felt bad saying this, but I was like, you know, a lot of this shit, man. Cause he was just like, I can't find anybody to date. Nobody want to date me. La, la, la. It's like a lot of this shit is your location guy. Like nobody mm. around here wants to date you. And I get that you might have a soulmate out there and you might not ever come across them. Cause they may live in California and you may never live, leave Illinois. I was mm -hmm. like, but you go to a different city and get up on Tinder and you're going to get a ton of matches. Yeah, I was like, I promise you, it's going to be different. I was like, so like, you know, we we get into these shells and trapped in these corners that we think, fuck, you know, I'm sitting here. I'm going to be lonely. I'm going to die alone. I'm not going to ever find nobody when in all reality, all you need is a change of scenery. Maybe this ain't the place. And I would or also patience. go ahead. Yeah, patience, I was just gonna say, or patience. Yeah, because a lot of a lot of those people as well. Uh, who knows? We might be talking about the same person. Uh, mm -hmm. just hearing all the time, you know, oh, I'm not going to meet somebody. I'm not going to meet somebody. And then like a week later, boom, you know, boom in a relationship, yep. you know, mm -hmm. like, well, that's, that, that's one just of, like dying alone like a minute ago. That's one of those lessons for five months. That's one of those lessons I felt like I've had to learn these past couple of years. Cause I was that like, I, I, you know, I realized I was one of those people that I'd get out of a relationship and, you know, you'd have your little depression you know, because separating from anybody that's normally in your life is going to cause very, that. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be different. You're changing. So and it would be like, you know, you would do that. And then I'd go out with my friends. They'd be like, come on, let's go out. And then you'd meet somebody. Next thing you know, boom, you're dating again. And I did that for years and years and years. And it was like, you know, I, I, I could see that pattern. My friend was calling me a, 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 a girlfriend chameleon. Uh, and shit like that saying, I just, you know, oh, you're just bam, 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 bam. And, and it was like, that was one of the things I felt like I needed to learn was that patience to sit there and go, no, like, this is the person I would like to, to build something in life with. Mm -hmm. We're not going to just choose the first person that comes and fits some of that. We're not going to choose the person that fits 80% of that. Like, I have this idea of somebody I want that, you know, I'm going to find that fucking person out there. And, and then just having that, like I said, just having that patience and then building that life. Like for me, it's been building that life that if that never happens, fuck it, I'm good with that. Like I've lived this huge life that I'm proud of that. Like, you know, I already had a kid, you know what I'm saying? So it's not like I'm afraid of leaving my bloodline or my mm -hmm. name or anything out there that's already happened. So it's like re in reality, if I never ever was with somebody again, like I already did what society said you're supposed to do. Yeah. So like, I'm good. Yeah. That was going to kind of be a point I was going to bring up. There's also nothing wrong with dying alone. Like no. that's the thing. Like sometimes that's just the case. And you know, sometimes that's sad, but like being a singular person is not bad. And I think we have a lot, there's a lot of pressure to like constantly be in a relationship yeah. and like specifically with like young people, young, young people these days, they're all out on the apps and fucking. And like, there's so much pressure for that. 
And it's like, to what end though? You know, you, again, when you, like I, I was saying before, I live alone now, you know, which has been a, a huge blessing, but sometimes I'll get home and I'm like, well, the only person here is me. Mm -hmm. And like, sometimes I'll have a really good day. Like uh, I'll do a stand up show or something. And I really like have gone gangbusters. And then I'm like, who do, who do I share this with? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, it's me. You get to sit down and you get to kind of go, good job, me. But then, you know, there's some, a certain level of discomfort having come home to somebody for the last three years and, you know, getting over that. But you do, you do, you just have to learn how to adapt and go trust yourself. You have yep. to trust and respect and love yourself above everything else. And then you're ready to be with someone, I feel like. Oh, yeah, because I will, because when you get to that level, especially like with what you're just saying and you're, you're having these moments where you realize like oh some baller shit came because i've had that same thing where like i got some really great news and then you're like fuck i really don't have anybody like that i'm like real like emotionally connected to right now to share this with that like can be excited with me and then it's like so you do you do learn to be there for yourself and be like hell yeah like great <laughs> fucking job but then like for me it's like then now that like when you find that though and you do have that person it's like you got so much more of an appreciation for that because mm -hmm. like you're like, man, I remember that moment. I did not have this. And now yeah. I do have this. Yeah. So I'm going to appreciate this. And like that's kind of, you know, one of those things like even when it's like, you know, like last night, like, you know, I went on like a second date with a girl that I'm really like digging on. I'm like, man, she's great. But it's, you know, I, I will stop at certain moments in my head and just really just appreciate that moment. Mm -hmm. And then then. And all that and soak it in. And it's like, you know, if this never happens again, if this is just it, if, you know, if I died or anything or some shit mm -hmm. fucking happen, like I really s sit there and I take that time to appreciate, you know, the p the person I'm with, the moment I'm in and, and stuff like that. And then I've, 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 I've like noticed that they, I carry that now, you know what I'm saying? Like there's relationships I can't even remember because I didn't do that shit with, but the people that I've chosen to to sit there and do that with it's like i still remember those exact moments i can still like close my eyes and go right back to that moment mm -hmm. anytime i feel like and then you know our brains are fucking powerful and like that, that you know me and that person may not be in speaking terms me and that person may never ever fucking talk again but they can never take that away from me i can go right now and lay in bed and close my eyes and go right back to that moment no no person in this world uh, adventure time with somebody that brought me like a show that brought me to that realization. Yeah. And it, yeah, it's crazy. But I love that show. And like a lot of people don't really get into it that I know, but it's just like the, oh, the very last episode, I think is one of the very last songs they like sing in it. And it, like, basically that was like their whole, like gist of their song was like, you know, time, things are going to change. We're going to go separate ways. We're going to, you know, we're all going to die and all this stuff, but no matter what happens, 150,000 years down the line, we will always be back then. Like that that day, that moment, that time will always have happened and it will always be back then. So we will always, and it's like, damn, like having that sort of a realization and being able to take those moments now in life and, and keeping those with me, that's been a big plus. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, we've, we've ran over a little bit here, but that's okay. Yeah. It's okay. We're vibing. Can I tell you? Nine times out of ten, when I'm on somebody's show, that's the I yap a lot. So <laughs> we're known for that too. <laughs> yeah, it happens. It happens. Well, Tristan, thank you for joining us. Yeah, Gosh. thanks, man. Well, too. Uh, it's been real. Yeah, it's been it's very been fun. Pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs> Peace, everybody. Smooches and deuces. See you Wednesday. <laughs>